Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the April Partner Webinar. Uh, it's a delight to be speaking with you again. Uh, we used to do this every month before the acquisition closed, uh, and it's great to be back after a short hiatus. Uh, what we wanted to cover off today was to give you an overview of what we've been up to. We also had some pretty exciting releases happen last month, uh, and we wanted to talk to you about that. And as always, we are open to any questions. We can take questions on the Zoom chat, uh, or uh, we'll unmute at the end of the call, and you can we can have a free, a free and frank conversation. Uh, with that, if we move to the next slide, uh, I wanted to introduce you to the partner team. Uh, we've had some changes here at Chef, uh, and I wanted to make sure that uh, you know who's who. Uh, my name is Vikram Ghosh, and I lead up uh, the partnership team within Chef, and now the Chef BU within Progress, called Core C. Um, and you're seeing a bunch of people on this slide here. Uh, Denise runs our system integrator partners. Uh, most of you are system integrators, so Denise will be your point of contact. I see a few of you from our reseller partners or channels. Uh, Ronak is the person who has joined us three months ago, and he's on point for all of our channels, resellers and distributors. Uh, Kalyan is brand new to the team, and he's literally just started last week uh, on point for partner operations. Uh, I'm sure you know Jeff, he's been handling platform partners, the AWS's, Azure's, Microsoft's, uh, Google's of the world. Uh, Manasa is also brand new on the team. She joined us about three months ago doing partner marketing. So you'll hear from her as well. And finally, I have an open head here in Seattle uh, to work together with Jeff to manage all of our, uh, all of our platform partners. So any referrals are welcome. Please feel free to send it our way. Uh, if you move to the next slide, you know, it's been six months since Progress acquired Chef uh, and time flies. Uh, during this six months, uh, what me and my team have been up to is integrating our partner functions within Chef uh, into Progress. We also went on a little bit of a soul searching mission earlier this year uh, with the rest of the leadership team here at Chef. And we were trying to redefine uh, what is our objective? Why do we exist here? And uh, at Chef, if you remember, uh, we used to proudly say that we exist to improve the lives of IT operators. We tweaked that a little bit and we said, look, we help teams accelerate their DevOps journey. Uh, that's what Chef within Progress exists for. Uh, that's our North Star, that's our purpose. Uh, but with the acquisition, uh, there were three key tenets of what Progress brought to us. First of, it, first of all, was applying structure and a lot of resources to build out momentum in the DevSecOps space and thereby drive growth, drive growth for our partners, drive growth for ourselves and our customers. Uh, we also wanted to deepen our commitment uh, to our customers, partners, as well as the open source community. And we wanted to make it a lot easier for organizations and teams to be able to adopt, use, and gain value from our software quickly. Uh, we locked on these three as being the guiding principles of how we enable and accelerate teams on their journey towards DevOps. Uh, if you move to the next slide, uh, that is super pertinent on what we're gonna be talking to you about today. Uh, we have a brand new release of Chef Infra 17 or Infra Client 17. Uh, for folks who know us, every April, we have a new release of Chef Infra 17, and we're gonna be talking to you about that. Uh, we are, we've also uh, got a bunch of features and functionality that we have literally just announced uh, within the enterprise automation stack. Uh, for folks who know us uh, and have been with us for a while, 
uh, enterprise automation stack was an offering that we announced first about two years ago, or exactly two years ago in April of 2019. And with this release, uh, what we're gonna be talking about is some new dashboards and some patterns within EAS. So what you're seeing here is a move of within EAS or the enterprise automation stack from just being a procurement vehicle to, to slowly looking more and more like a full blown solution and a product that you can buy from us. And finally, uh, we wanted to talk to you about the community recognition program. Uh, this is a program wherein we recognize all of our past year contributions. For this year, we'll be recognizing all the contributions made in 2020. Uh, there's an event coming up on April 28th, and we'll put the link on the chat here of where you can register. Uh, and also wanted to highlight to you that ChefConf 2021, um, we have plans for it online again in September of this year. So hopefully uh, the world is a better place in September and we can have some amount of in-person interactions. Uh, but for now, we're planning it as an online event. With that, what I wanted to do is to introduce our speakers for today. So if you go to the next slide, uh, we have, I have, I'm joined by three of my wonderful co-workers here. Uh, Heather Payton, who leads a product marketing for Chef Infra as well as Habitat. Uh, Tim Smith, who a lot of you might know, he's our product manager for Chef Infra. And Benny Vasquez, who leads up our community and DevRel efforts. So with that, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Heather. Uh, Heather, take it away. Great, thank you. Um, if we just go to the next slide then, we're gonna go ahead and talk about um, the spring 2021 release that Vikram uh, provided an overview for. So if we go to the next slide. Uh, so in addition to um, Chef Infra and Habitat, I also have responsibility for the Chef Enterprise Automation Stack um, and this is a solution I'm just really, really excited about and especially excited to talk to partners about because there's just so much opportunity here um, to do some really innovative and cool things together uh, with our clients. So uh, we, we, we launched EAS in April 2019. When we launched, it was really more of a, a purchasing vehicle, a way to consume um, all of Chef's enterprise products, InSpec, Habitat, um, automate um, and infra kind of in a single skew. Um, but the vision has always been to kind of integrate it and deliver um, a unified platform for some of these advanced enterprise um, solutions. So in October of last year, um, we launched Chef Infrastructure Management, uh, which combined Chef Infra and Chef Automate into a single SKU and Chef App Delivery, which combined Habitat and Infra and Automate into a single SKU. And the really exciting piece, kind of the, the missing link was Habitat went from per service pricing to per node pricing, which simplifies everybody's life in the world and really kind of gave legs to Chef EAS um, as an integrated solution for automating infrastructure, compliance, and app delivery. Um, so today, when we look at Chef Enterprise Automation Stack, we have the three pillars around infrastructure management, configuration management, infrastructure's code, drift management, compliance, and remediation. Um, with our CIS, CIS certified audit and remediation content, Chef EAS does include all Chef premium content. Again, it's really all of our solutions minus desktop um, in, in the stack. And then Chef App Delivery, which we, we move into runbook automation, um, application packaging and application release or orchestration. So next slide. So with this release, um, we've kind of up-leveled our messaging around Chef Enterprise Automation Stack, um, keying in on scalable patterns, which we're gonna talk about the new um, compliance phase, which um, unifies um, infra and inspect into a single agent replacing the audit cookbook. Tim's gonna be going into more detail. And what's really cool about that, when you look at kind of those advanced 
business-driven solutions like patch management, for example, being able to have a single agent to um, do the infrastructure configuration and run the compliance check really kind of simple, simplifies our implementation of solutions like patch management. Um, so these are really exciting, um, I think, for all of you out there as partners. Um, they provide a, a, a simpler way to leverage the, the whole chef toolkit um, and integrate into custom solutions for clients, combining, you know, the customer's existing tool chain with your consulting and implementation expertise, along with the chef kit in a much easier um, to consume way. Um, full stack visibility, again, we're continue to create, um, automate as the enterprise visibility and management plane. Uh, with that, we're continuing to move the functionality of um, uh, Chef Server Manage into Automate. Um, goal is also to move more of the, the functionality for Builder into Automate, providing like that single enterprise stub, hub, sorry, and unified experiences with, um, you know, proven like UIs and experience. So developers get everything they need in Chef Workstation. Um, system admins get everything um, they need in Automate so they can manage roles, access, rights, set up views for their users. Um, and it just becomes a, a much more manageable um, solution for clients to go ahead and implement. And with that, I think we have one, I have one more slide. Chef Habitat is now included in um, the Chef Workstation CLI. Again, going to our vision of kind of that unified um, experience. Now it's a single install single place to go ahead and get all access to all chef um, tools. And with that, I'm gonna be uh, turning things over to my, um, my automation infra uh, partner, Tim Smith. Hey everybody, <clears throat> glad to be here. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of really cool stuff that we can talk about that's coming in our upcoming release uh, of Chef Infra Client 17. Uh, first off, we have our new uh, <clears throat> Chef and for Client compliance phase. This is a really big change for us. And like Heather was saying, this is really about us seeing uh, infrastructure and uh, auditing and compliance really as a single action that you take that can be done in a single agent. Um, this is going to allow you to do everything you did with the audit cookbook before, except now you don't have the audit cookbook, which is a fantastic customer benefit right out of the box. Uh, people can get started uh, with their infrastructure management, with their compliance uh, needs without any dependencies, nothing that has to be updated, nothing that has to be pulled down remotely, especially if you have, you know, high latency WAN links where that can be a problem. Uh, and you can just push that data right into Automate. <clears throat> um, or you can use one of the other reporters, you know, to export that to JSON or to CSV, or in this case, uh, in this screenshot here, uh, to push that out on the command line. Uh, we have a whole bunch of different reporters that are available now all you know, built right into the client, which is really exciting. Um, and this is kind of part of our vision of changing how we think about uh, <clears throat> infrastructure as code. Uh, it's not just infrastructure as code anymore, it's really policy as code. And this is something you're gonna see us talk a lot about and move towards in a lot of our product offerings. Uh, we really see kind of a three-part process in how people develop this policy. Uh, on the left here, we're going to create and test policy. That's something we would do in Chef Workstation. Uh, allow users locally on their workstation to iterate over what their infrastructure should look like, what their compliance needs are, to go through that policy change, to test it, to execute it all locally. Once they have confidence in it, push it through a CI pipeline up to their Chef server. Uh, where we actually enforce that system state, right? We make those changes on the system. Uh, we check that compliance. Uh, we take the results of that, not just the infrastructure changes, but also the compliance and auditing. And we push that up into our data aggregation and validation, which is what is happening in Chef Automate. Uh, from there, we have visibility into it, right? Sysadmins, managers, whoever needs to log into that. Uh, can log in and see that data. They can see what's happening in terms of their infrastructure changes. They can see their compliance data. They can also export that data. We can push that into things like ServiceNow or alert into Slack. <clears throat> um, so there's a whole bunch more that you'll see about this. Uh, this is kind of our, our vision for how uh, changes happen and how people are working in a world where we're not just talking about infrastructure changes anymore, in a world where we have to really bring DevSecOps uh, to the forefront. Uh, the other big change you're going to see a lot of is our work 
bringing management capabilities into Automate. This is capabilities that previously were in our Chef Manage UI. Uh, these are coming into Automate. Uh, it allows you to add uh, your chef servers and add individual organizations or all the organizations from those chef servers right into Automate. Um, that gives you the ability to view and, and we'll go into a little bit more about how you can edit the policy, right? Before we were looking at the changes that were happening, uh, what was happening from the chef client run, uh, pushing up, you know, that we made a service be enabled or reinstalled packages, but this is actually allowing us to see, you know, this is the specific policy we have. These are the environments or roles that are on a node. These are the policy files that are on a node. Uh, these are the data bags we have available to us. Uh, and it's really giving people a common UI to work in, right? We don't want you to have to switch out and go into other tools. Uh, we want everything to happen in the Automate UI. We want that to be the centralized location uh, where you make the policy changes and then you see the, the results of those policy changes. Uh, and this is gonna be something again that you see more of as time goes on. Uh, right now uh, in the current releases of Automate, uh, as of this week, uh, we have a pretty extensive amount of functionality here for viewing that data. You can view your roles and environments. You can view your clients. Uh, you can view data bags. Uh, a lot of the capabilities to, to look in and see kind of what the state of your chef server is. Uh, what's in development right now is more edit capabilities. Some of those have been merged actually today. Uh, you'll see that actually ship in the next week, uh, two weeks. Uh, and we're going to slowly roll more capabilities out there. Probably every release of Automate coming with additional capabilities in terms of editing data on the chef server, really making that a replacement for chef manage. Uh, and then our next phase from then, uh, things we'll deliver uh, throughout the year and probably throughout next year is going to be additional functionality to really tie that management into <clears throat> the automated experience, make that part of, of how you manage um, your infrastructure as a whole, giving you fine grained controls uh, about how you manage those nodes, uh, what their policy is, uh, you know, allowing you to bring them into projects and all the things uh, that go along with security controls that we have uh, within manage or sorry within automate. Uh, so that's our unified uh, user experience. Uh, this is another thing we're really excited about. Uh, allows us to really get onto that modern platform and that single UI. Uh, next, we have a whole bunch of really great stuff that is coming out in Chef and for Client 17, uh, along with uh, the workstation releases there. And this kind of comes into four different places. Uh, the first is a lot of work we're doing to streamline our developer experience. You know, that's where most people interact with Chef. That's what they're doing day to day as they're editing this policy. Uh, they're working in Chef Workstation. We want to make sure that's a really great experience for them. We're also uh, doing a whole lot of work to increase our platform coverage and support. Uh, it's really important for us to make sure that, you know, you can install Chef Infra Client uh, anywhere you need to. You can install Workstation uh, anywhere you would need to so that you can manage those systems that you have in your environments. Uh, part of that is also improving how we work in clouds. We want to make sure <clears throat> that we support all the major clouds and everyone has a great experience there with Chef. Uh, so we've expanded some of our cloud detection and, and uh, security functionality there. Uh, and then the last one is CookStyle. Uh, we've done a whole lot of work on CookStyle over the last year. Uh, we've got about 100 new cops in CookStyle at this point, uh, and that is really making it so you can uh, write better cookbooks, uh, get guidance right in your editor to know that you know, you're, you're doing the right thing, you're uh, writing code that can run on the latest versions of Chef Client. So we'll dive in a little bit and talk about some of those things. In terms of streamlined developer experience, uh, this is um, predominantly in our workstation application, right? This is where we're doing our work uh, as a user. <clears throat> um, some of the big deliverables there is really expanding platform support, uh, making sure we have uh, packages available for Mac OS Big Sur, uh, Windows 8, and Amazon Linux 2 if you want to run Chef Workstation in some of the uh, CI pipelines you might run in Amazon. On the uh, <clears throat> policy files side of things, we've done a lot of improvements to policy files. We've gone through and looked at a lot of rough spots in that, in that process and made sure that we really kind of streamlined how people interact with policy files, how they interact with the chef command line, <clears throat> chef command line and set up their workstation. Wow. Much better. <laughs> um, on test kitchen, we've, we've done a whole bunch of work there. Again, making sure that we have really, really great support for all the clouds that users might be on. Um, we have improvements to AWS, GCE, Azure, OpenStack, uh, on top of the improvements that we've seen, you know, for local hypervisors, things like the Vagrant Experience or, <clears throat> um, or uh, VMware vSphere. Uh, this is really making sure that you can test those cookbooks anywhere you want. 
with whatever configurations uh, you have. We don't want you to be limited to testing on a local system. If you're in the cloud and you want to test your systems in the cloud, we want that to be a uh, first class system. Uh, we've also made some great improvements on Windows testing there. There was a lot of different edge cases where you could see failures in, in terms of testing Windows with Test Kitchen. Uh, we've gone and kind of walked through that whole workflow and really made sure that Windows uh, works uh, as it should, uh, as you would expect it to. Um, it's a lot harder to test Windows, uh, but we've made it, you know, a really great experience uh, in terms of being, especially being able to spin those systems up in AWS or Azure. Uh, and then a lot of improvements in terms of performance, right? Um, we've really improved uh, how Test Kitchen is going to run in CI environments and really sped up some of those flows um, to give you a really great experience. Uh, on the cook style side, like I said, we've introduced a ton of new cops there. Uh, that gives you a whole bunch of new places in your chef code where you'll see that you can improve uh, a whole bunch of uh, places within that cook style code base now have auto correction, which is really powerful. It lets people just go over their existing code bases and modernize them. In a lot of cases, it'll just completely rewrite resources and put helpers in and simplify code makes it much easier for new people uh, to get started on, on legacy code bases. Um, and then we've also uh, moved all of our documentation for that uh, onto a new format made it a lot easier to consume. Uh, once you see an alert right in the CLI or right in your editor, you can go right out to our docs page. It'll give you examples on how you want to update that code. Um, in terms of increased platform support, um, this is a pretty big one. Uh, we've done enough work here that it actually warranted a whole slide, which is really exciting for me. Um, <clears throat> one of the big deliverables we have for this year was really expanding our platform support for ARM. Uh, we want to make sure that as people move uh, from their x86 onto ARM workloads in the cloud that we're available there. Uh, so we have ARM packages for all the major Linux distributions, uh, whether you're running Amazon Linux 2 or whether you're running SLEVs, we have packages for you now. Um, <clears throat> and that includes all the things you would need within Chef Client, all the helpers, all the OHI detection, uh, really done a whole bunch of work uh, to make sure that ARM works uh, fully in the cloud. Uh, on the Mac side, you know, this has been a pretty big year for changes in the Mac OS. Uh, in terms of Big Sur, a whole lot of challenges there. We have a new uh, package specifically for Big Sur with improved support there, uh, particularly around uh, managing profiles in Big Sur. Uh, and then we have a new Homebrew update resource uh, for those using Homebrew. It makes it a lot easier to get started managing packages with Homebrew. Uh, on the Windows side, we have packages for Windows 8. You might ask, uh, why do we need Windows 8 packages when we have Windows 10? Uh, this is a really important one, particularly for a lot of people who have kiosks or embedded systems where they come with Windows 8, you can't update them, you still need to manage them with Chef. Uh, we have a package specifically for that, it goes through a whole test pipeline. So we'll really make sure that Windows 8 is going to work for everybody who has those uh, point of sales or kiosk machines. Um, we have a bunch of new resources there. Uh, two of the really great ones that I wanted to call out were our Windows audit policy and our Windows firewall policy or profile. Uh, you're seeing a lot more Windows functionality in Chef that's geared towards security. We want to make sure as we go through those, some of those audit phases, that as we identify those issues, that we give you the tools in the Chef client to actually remediate them. Uh, so these are two new resources that will really allow you to lock down those Windows systems in your environment. We've also seen a whole bunch of our, just across the board performance improvements. This is a hard one to put into a bullet, uh, but the client installs three times faster. The initial startup is twice as fast. Uh, and then with anything that involves PowerShell has seen a huge imp performance improvement. So really just across the board, uh, you should see the Chef client using less memory, less CPU and executing faster. We put a huge amount of effort into making that Windows experience better. Uh, and then the final one is PowerShell core support. This is really huge uh, for folks. You know, we're seeing a big shift uh, in the Microsoft ecosystem away from the traditional PowerShell and into PowerShell core. Uh, Chef is gonna continue to support the, uh, the now uh, legacy PowerShell, I guess you could call it. Uh, but we also have support for, for Microsoft's new PowerShell core, which is pretty awesome. Um, on the cloud side, this is really about, uh, you know, making sure that we provide users with all the data that they need to write uh, the cookbooks uh, that they have, uh, making sure they know where they are in the cloud, having all the capabilities that their systems have. Um, so we've improved both of our, our, both our AWS and our Azure metadata collection. Um, on the AWS side, part of that includes supporting uh, Amazon's new IMDSV2 uh, metadata endpoint. That is a new secure metadata endpoint. It requires a little bit of credentials exchange before you can get the metadata. Uh, we handle that uh, exchange now, which means in OHI, you'll be able to get all the data on your metadata, even if you have that new secure 
metadata uh, feature enabled on the nodes. Uh, we also gather more data for you. This is uh, something we got by updating some, to some newer APIs on Amazon's part. Uh, this allows you to get just more information that you might want when you're writing your QuickBooks, more data that you'll expose into Automate, more data you'll expose in your Chef server. Uh, we'll collect all that data across your environment. Things like maintenance history and scheduled upcoming maintenances can be pretty handy when you can expose that and search through that programmatically. On the Azure side, we've seen an overall huge cloud detection uh, improvement. Uh, especially on Windows, knowing when we're in Azure, knowing where we're in Azure. Uh, and then we gather significantly more data. Um, I think about 20 or 30 new uh, pieces of data coming out of Azure. It gives you the information that you need, you know, just to make those critical decisions on how you configure systems, particularly when you're trying to build like clusters out. Like, how do I distribute this? Uh, <clears throat> where do I put certain uh, roles? Uh, you'll have all the data available to you now uh, to make those decisions. Uh, and then the final thing I wanted to talk about was just some of the cook style enhancements that we have. Uh, like I said, we've got 100 new cops. That brings our total list of chef specific cops to 220. Uh, we have all the, the also the standard Ruby stuff, which is like another two or 300 cops. So there's a huge number of rules here uh, to help people write great code, uh, to help people modernize that infrastructure and really to get them kickstarted and jump started uh, in their uh, upgrade processes, you know, just point. Uh, cook style right at your repository and have it uh, basically melt away tech debt, right? Uh, it'll go through, it'll autocorrect. What it can't autocorrect, it's gonna identify. Now we're gonna give you comprehensive documentation on that. Uh, everything you see that can't be autocorrected, you can just link right into our doc site. You'll see examples of how you go about updating that. Uh, and then we've just done a whole bunch of additional improvements there, uh, increasing the performance, increasing the reliability, uh, adding additional auto corrections, and then making sure that we have integrations with external tools. Uh, external tools like VS Code, where you can now get inline uh, views right into the changes uh, that need to be made in your code. You can make them right in your editor as you're typing, which is a really great feedback loop for users uh, to see, oh, I'm, I'm using an old pattern. I probably shouldn't use that anymore. And to kind of give them that, that feedback loop before they go into a CI process and fail a build, they can do it right in their editor. Uh, before uh, before anyone else sees it, right? Uh, so that's cook style. It's really uh, pretty awesome. I would definitely check it out. Uh, you can see the enormous list of cops uh, on that little link in the bottom there. Um, the final thing I'll leave you with is <clears throat> uh, two great links that we will post in chat because these are long ones. Um, we have a ton of releases that come out. We've got probably uh, two or three releases uh, across our tools that happen every week. Uh, you can subscribe. To, our, to this particular discourse channel. You can get just our release announcements. You won't get people asking for help or anything like that. You'll just see the release announcements. You'll know, you know the latest versions of Workstation and Automate and Inspect and Chef Client. Uh, we also have a great webinar series uh, that we just wrapped up our third installment of, and that is uh, our best practices webinar series. There's a link there. I believe that that also just got pasted into the channel. Uh, this webinar series goes over some of the stuff we talked about more in depth on the compliance phase, uh, drilling into how you use it, what it looks like, what the migration looks like, uh, diving deep into cook style and also diving deep into test kitchen with Dawkin. So these are really great webinars to kind of see some of that new stuff we have. We're going to keep dropping more of those, uh, showing people, you know, the, the new chef, I guess you could call it. Uh, and with that, I'm going to hand you off to Benny. So, Tim, before you go to Benny, just a quick question sure. on the on the Q&A tab. Uh, this is from Larry. Uh, is there an option for a chef run on a node from Automate UI under consideration? Yeah, the, the ability to kind of control your infrastructure out of Automate, I, I see that as a natural progression. Uh, is that under development right now? No. Is that kind of the place that we would like to go with some of this? Certainly, yeah. Uh, I think I think that's kind of you know the next steps you get into. You take Automate as it existed maybe last year where we were talking about more just a visibility pane and a, almost a monitoring solution into your infrastructure and automation and, and auditing. Uh, and you turn it into really that single place, right? Where you have a full control pane. That the logical thing you'd wanna do in that is to kick off those runs directly. Uh, there's some technical challenges to that, certainly some security challenges that are pretty massive, uh, but that is like, that is absolutely something that we would like to deliver on. Uh, and if you've been around long enough and you kind of experienced push jobs, you know, that was, 
that was the dream of push jobs is how that would work, right? You would just from a UI click and like run chef or from a UI do ad hoc jobs, that, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's where we want to take it. Awesome. Thank you. And I posted the link for the ideas portal on AHA. So Larry, feel yeah. free to go in there and add any idea, including this, that you would like to see in the product. Yeah, that one might be in there. Uh, if it is, like certainly vote on it. Right. That's one of the greatest things in the yeah. AHA portal that like as a product manager, that is something we look at. It seems silly, but like, you know, like a Reddit style upvote, like the more people that, that upvote those uh, ideas, the more we see feedback and realize like, oh, that is something that we should be exploring in the future. OK, there's one more question uh, from Amit this time uh, he said uh, I had been looking for adding chef server details under automate. Is there any specific doc link for it, for it? I believe with the last release of Automate that we put some documentation up there. I know that that was one of the complaints in the first release. Uh, you know, to a certain extent, some of this initially was definitely a preview. Uh, as we moved it into more of a GA release uh, with, the, I think, the last two or three releases of Automate, uh, that was one of the big deliverables was making sure we had the documentation up there that walks you through that process. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty sure if you go to docs.shep.io, under automate, you're going to find docs in that go through that flow of, of adding the servers. Uh, you have to add the server and then you have to add the orgs. And that is kind of actually one of the places in the UI where people trip up a little bit right now is making sure that, you know, once you add the server, the thing you're trying to actually manage is an organization under the server and not the server. You might have a one to one map in there, but some people have like one server with a thousand orgs. So awesome. I don't see any other questions, but if there are questions that keep coming up, please feel free to use the Q&A tab. Sure. All right. Well, I will I will really hand it over to Benny now. <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? It's super sure. Super sure? Super sure this time? Okay. So, hi, everybody. I'm Benny. I run the developer relations team here at Chef Progress, and we um, one of the questions that we keep getting since this, especially and specifically since the acquisition is around progress's interest in continuing to, to maintain this strong open source connection and this strong open source community. And in, uh, I, I want to say it was in March, we released this blog post around that specifically. We, uh, progress has a, a track record of supporting open source and honestly continues to do that in a lot of different ways so we've got that blog post you can talk you can um you can kind of reference and see exactly how they want to how they want to go forward with that but we're also getting to do things like this community recognition program that Vikram uh, mentioned it's brand new this year and it is uh, uh something that we've wanted to do internally for a really long time it allows us to thank every single contributor to every org that we have, any, anything that um, came in, whether it was a, uh, uh, whether it was something like a docs update or whether it was a feature or it doesn't matter, everybody that contributes, it matters. So we get to recognize all of them. On the 28th, as part of the launch of Chef 17, uh, we will include a, a community celebration. We've got a couple of little fun things planned and we'll go, um, we'll get to talk about all of that kind of stuff more there. So definitely register for that if you haven't yet. It's going to be exciting. And then if we go to the next slide, of course, the biggest question that folks have had uh, is around Chef Comp because that conferences, obviously, we all know as part of an acquisition are one of the first things to go, but ChefConf is definitely happening. As last year, we got to <laughs> we got to commit the quickest pivot in the history of ever from a normal event to a fully digital event. And this year, we get to kind of leverage those skills and those muscles again to bring a full digital event. The um, on the last slide, you might have noticed that we said one of one of the fun things that I'm excited about at this event is uh, that while we are adding in a new adding back in a charge for a ticket this year, the charge is going to be 
pretty uh, small. I We haven't defined it yet, but it's gonna be somewhere between like 10 and $25 US. And all of the money that gets, that gets uh, used for registration is gonna get donated to a charity. The charities, as you register, are going to be something that you can nominate. So if you have a favorite charity, charity or you know of somebody, know of a charity that deserves uh, that kind of support, you get to nominate it as part of your registration. It's that kind of stuff to me that really uh, means that Progress is putting its money where its mouth is. It's not just the expansion of the DevRel team. It's not just the the community recognition program. It's not just that kind of stuff. Um, it is stuff like they're they're letting us take the money that we would be getting and put give it to actual community events. So that's clinical. And I think those are my only slides. But definitely the next slide will show you the big long link that we'll drop in chat too for the register uh, to register for the chef the the chef info client 17 launch on April 28th. You get to see Tim and I again, and it's going to be, we're going to have some kind of party, I'm sure. That's what we do. Thank you, everyone, for joining, and I'll hand it back to Vikram. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Benny. Thanks, Tim. And thank you, Heather. Uh, thank you for walking us through uh, EAS Infra 17, as well as the up and coming community celebration and ChefCon 2021. Uh, I should admit that 2021 is still a year that I have a hard time seeing. I go back and say it's 2020, as if that year never happened. But thank you so much for walking us through it. Uh, there's one question on the QA tab that I think is for Tim uh, and that from Amit. Uh, with, and Tim, the question from Amit is with push jobs being deprecated, is running multiple jobs, uh, with push jobs being deprecated, running multiple jobs is difficult. Uh, do we have an alternative for push jobs as yet? Uh, there isn't a, a productized offering for that. Uh, there's some definitely some solution stuff that has been developed uh, in terms of how people do that, integrating in with other tools and, and uh, override run lists and things like that, named run lists when you're in policy files. Uh, but yeah, there there is not a, a full productized replacement for that. Uh, I would say push jobs is really kind of a lesson in uh, not just the technical complexities of that kind of solution, but really the organizational complexities of, of having uh, a central server that executes out to all these systems that might be critical and secure. Uh, so that's, you know, that's a place that we want functionality, but I think it's going to have to look a little bit different than push jobs and, and behave a little bit differently, particularly if we bring it into the automate UI, that gives us some nice advantages there, just because we have all that fine grain access control. It's it's right in there. So, um, I I you're not going to see that this year, but uh, I would really hope that we build that in the future. That's something that I'm really excited for us to be able to do uh, as a as a really like a, a you know top notch feature within automate. Uh, but it's tricky. It's a really tricky one to solve. <laughs> But thank you for being so candid. Um, from my vantage point, I can already see the tea leaves. Uh, we built up strong RBAC capabilities into Automate. We're slowly looking at Automate becoming the replacement for functionality that people expect on the chef server. Uh, hopefully we are able to get through the technical challenges and the security challenges of having uh, jobs being run centrally from the chef. Uh, from the automate server. I'm sorry, I keep going back to chef server, uh, but uh, thank you for that explanation. Uh, are there any other questions from anybody else? I know this is not a super quiet group uh, and there are a couple of people here who are super vocal. Uh, so uh, if there are any questions, feel free to use the Q&A tab or I can unmute everybody on the call as well. Uh, I hope this was a good use of time and apologies for the hiatus that we had to take with the acquisition. Uh, we are going to come back to you again next month with another one of the partner webinars. Uh, and we will cover, uh, I'm going to give out one of the topics, 
we're going to cover something that we just spoke about today as well, which is how do you go out and submit ideas to us? Uh, Tim mentioned that you can upvote. We'll walk you through a little bit of you know what happens once you put an idea in there and how do we then uh, consider what we are going to be building in the future. In addition to a few more topics. All right, another question from Keith Walters, and this one probably is for Benny. Uh, does Chef still offer the con community contributor license for open source contributions? So the short answer is I think so. The longer answer is I haven't had a direct interaction with any of that uh, since the acquisition. So we'd, I'd wanna walk through the process with you. If you, uh, if you wanna reach out to me, you can find me at Benny at, at chef.io or you can find me on Slack or whatever. Um, if you are interested and still, and think you qualify, definitely let's, let's have a conversation and get through it. Thank you, Benny. And Keith, mm -hmm. just for context, Benny has literally stepped into this role uh, a month ago, Benny? No, no, 10 days ago. 10 days ago. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, please uh, give her some time and we'll come back to you with an answer. Any other questions here? All right, and Keith, I've also pasted uh, Benny's email ID so that you have it handy, Benny at chef.io, pretty straightforward. Uh, any other questions? Otherwise we can give everybody 18 minutes back. Bobbleheads, Benny? That's me, that's my chair dancing. <laughs> All right then, thank you so much. And I appreciate everybody's time. Uh, please check out the links that we posted on uh, the meeting chat. Uh, the Chef Infra Client 17 launch is on April 28th. Uh, feel free to register. Uh, there's also the community recognition program. The blog will go live in the next 17 minutes now. So uh, you can have a look at that as well. And uh, we posted all the other links that we shared during the presentation. The recording will be available on chef.io slash webinars. Obviously you've registered for this one. So you'll receive an email uh, with the link to the recording as well. Uh, feel free to share that with your coworkers, people who could make it and they can watch the recording on demand. So thank you again. And thanks to all our presenters and appreciate everybody's time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.